All right, you want to lose uh, 30 pounds in 90 days. Yeah, I bet. Who doesn't? You uh, want to do it, and you want it to be extremely easy. Of course. I can do this. I can make this happen. I can even show you, but uh, the reality is you know you, and I have a feeling I know you too. But anyway, welcome to Walk Talk Vent. Let's do this. Hi guys, welcome back. Listen, I wanted to share a new YouTuber with you. Her name is Brielle Fulfilled. She's one of these smaller YouTubers, but she's got a great big personality. She's going to go over the five signs of a toxic friend, which by the way, if you're trying to do a diet and exercise routine, beware of the toxic friend. Beware of the toxic friend. As you've seen the title, we're going to talk about five toxic friends that you need to be getting rid of if you have noticed that they are in your friend group. Since this channel is based on self-love and energy and just feeling good and all of that good stuff, the very first friend that we're going to talk about that I feel is befitting <laughs> is the energy vampire, okay? The energy vampire. This person is always calling you because they have an issue. And now you just feel drained because he, this person has put all that bad energy off on you. And if you're anything like me and how I used to be, you want to fix, you want to help. So you sit there and you take on their problems like it's your problems. And at the end of that phone call, girl, you are messed up. You need a glass of wine. Hey, if you're dealing with a toxic friend, in the comments, put that you're going to get your crucifix and a wooden stake, just so I know. Because they have just pushed every button that you have, <laughs> okay? Toxic friend that I think you guys should stay away from is the leech, okay? Y'all know what a leech is, okay? This person is always needing something from you. Babysitting their kids, money, help with getting a job, wanting you to fill out their job applications, help with paying rent, paying a bill, watching their children while they go out and party, planning a birthday party that they were supposed to plan that they now want you to plan. Passing the buck, basically. Just want you to do everything. Don't be bringing them kids over here. And with the leech, this is never reciprocated. So they always need, 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 want, 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 and they never return the favor. Never. It's never reciprocal. Okay? They are going to leech off you as much as they can. They are the ones, and y'all have family members like this as well, that come to the house and they don't bring nothing. They just come and eat and they go. They come to whatever function you have. They partake in all the festivities. Don't bring a soda. Don't bring a, a loaf of bread. They just did a leech off of you. So one test I like doing to see if you have a good friend is take them out to lunch and you pay for it, right? And then if they ask you out to lunch and they don't pay for it, and there's like that awkward moment where you end up both paying for your own, right? you'll know not a great friend, right? Or at least she, he or she doesn't think as highly of you as you do of them. So, you know, good little test there. That's a toxic friend that you need to get rid of. And even if this is a family member, because people always want to say, oh, well, he's family or she's family. No. Get rid of the leech. And that we're going to talk about is the non-supporter. So the silent... Instagram watcher or Facebook watcher or YouTube watcher, the friend that watches everything you do, they see everything you do and they will never like a post. They will never call to congratulate you. They will never acknowledge accomplishment that you have. They're not going to support you. They probably secretly wish that you would fail at what you are doing because they feel some type of way about you accomplishing certain things that they have not been able to accomplish. They're probably secretly in competition with you, competing with you, and you don't even know. That goes on into another friend type that I'm going to talk about in a minute. But the non-supportive friend, 
Think about it. Look back on times where you've accomplished something. And it's not that you're walking around like me, 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 me. But when you have a friend, we talk about our accomplishments with each other. I have a best friend that we talk to. We talk all the time. She just recently got a job that she's really been waiting on. Like she's been wanting to get. She's been praying about it, praying about it. I knew about it. When my good sis called me and told me she got that job, I was celebrating harder than her. I was happy. I literally was near tears. Nah, -uh, you're fibbing, Brielle. Do you appreciate when your friends succeed to the point where you get in tears or where maybe not tears, but do you really feel like it happened to you as well? If so, that's an awesome quality. Put it in the comments. I was that happy for my friend. The want to be. The want to be just wants your life. He or she wants everything you got. And they can't understand why you're able to achieve certain things and they haven't. They may want your man. They may want your job. They want. They may want your house. They may want your woman. They may want your car. They. You got it. They want it. They want everything you have. They will try to copy your life in its entirety. Down to the way you walk, the way you talk, your hair, your nails. Everything you do, they do. You go get a new dress, they get a new dress. You go buy a new car, they buy a new car. You go out of this country, they got to come out of the country. You see the pattern? Everything you do, she then does. The one of me, she literally wants your life. Y'all ever seen that movie, Single White Female? Oh my God, that's another great movie. Have you ever seen Single White Female? It's kind of a worst case scenario, right? One of the girls moves in with the other, starts copying her, and then ultimately kind of becomes a psycho. But you got to check that movie out, Single White Female. I think it's with the Fonda girl, uh, Henry Fonda's granddaughter, I think. I forget her name. Bridget Fonda, I think. Good, good movie. Remember, though, sometimes people work from home. Sometimes they're a little bit out of touch with what's going on out there, right? Because of the um, pandemic, that we were, pandemic that we were going through and stuff, right? And so sometimes they might look at you as a beacon of light when it comes to trends and fashions and hairstyles. I see best friends mimic their friends' hairstyles and stuff a lot. Remember uh, back in the 80s when girls would wear that thing, it looked like a fan hit their hair, right? Everybody wore that. So sometimes your friends really rely on you for a fashion sense. So don't necessarily think that they're toxic just for that reason, but go with your gut, definitely. You need to be getting them out your life. Get rid of that wannabe friend. And last, we have number five. And this is the gossiper, the snake, the friend. Say you are in a friend group and it's three of you. And sometimes she calls you to talk about Chanel. She tells you all Chanel's business and everything Chanel has told you. She's just giving you all Chanel's tea. You don't even know that this is going on with Chanel because Chanel didn't give you the tea. Chanel gave this friend the tea. And now she's telling you all Chanel's business. Don't tell her your business. Yeah, sometimes you got to keep things to yourself, you know, especially when it comes to like trying to do self-improvements. Why tell somebody you're taking a 90-day challenge and then if you quit it on day three, it makes you look kind of silly, right? Why not just finish the 90-day challenge and then let everybody know that you're doing it again? Speaking of which, why don't you grab your shoes? Let's go for a walk. Hey guys, this is Jesse. If you've been here for a while, I want you to know that I'm very thankful to be a part of your team. And if you're new to the channel, I love walking around the neighborhood and I'd like to invite you to join us. We have a few rules and I'm sure you'll begin to pick them up along the way. But for now, just grab your shoes. Let's go for a walk. Welcome to Walk Talk Vent. Good morning, everybody. I was, uh, Watching FBI Director Christopher Wray uh, about two weeks ago on YouTube, of course, and he was discussing how China has a 50 to 1 person jump on us when it comes to like cyber threats and cybersecurity. 
And it was just really interesting because I know that technically the FBI is different than the military. But a couple years back, I heard that the U.S. military spends like $800 billion every single year for their military budget, right? And the next biggest country, which I don't remember off the top of my head if it was Russia or Japan, I think, or Russia or China, excuse me. But I believe China, let me go this way, there's too many dogs on the street. But the next biggest spender for military was like China or Russia at 80 billion, right? Here we are at 800 billion. And this was a couple years ago, so I have to assume it's even more now. Holy moly, it's like a jungle out here today with all these animals. Um, and it just got me to thinking, okay, we're spending 10 times what the next biggest country is spending as far as military wise. And if you were to combine all the countries of the world, the USA spends more on their military than all the other countries combined. So how are other countries so far ahead of us in every way, shape or form? Hey, that, that makes little to no sense to me. Why do we always need to come up with more budgetary money, right? So Christopher Ray is ultimately asking for more budgetary money. And it's just like, man, I don't understand why other countries can be so far ahead of us spending a fraction of what we do. And it's just like, what are we spending our money on? You know, it just seems really, really ridiculous. So that was a couple of weeks ago, but the reason I bring it up now is because it was on my feed again, which leads me to believe that maybe some experts are right. And when I say experts, I'm talking YouTube experts. Maybe something is in the works. So there was a theater in Russia that was attacked, I supposedly by ISIS, right? And apparently, apparently there's threats that some sort of Jewish community here in the U.S. is more than likely going to be attacked in this same way. So I wouldn't be surprised in the upcoming days or the upcoming weeks if we see some sort of attack. Apparently, no matter how much money we put towards military spending, and I know someone's going to say, Jesse, the FBI and the military are two complete, completely different entities. Okay, fine, but... If you're telling me that somebody's trying to attack us, whether it be through a cyber attack or through cells in the homeland, you know, we can't divert any of that military funding that we spend 10 times more than any other country and we're still behind the eight ball? That makes absolutely no sense to me. That sounds like something where they need to get their stuff in gear. They need to get themselves in line. And figure a way to make do with $800 billion. You know, if you can't throw $50 billion of that towards the FBI to secure the homeland, then what's the point of the military at all? You know? Apparently, Russia is trying to attack underwater cables. And those underwater cables are necessary components to global communication. So who knows, maybe in the future, the U.S. will be isolated <laughs> from the rest of the world and not able to communicate. I don't know how that works. What I do know is that no matter how much money we give to this, that, and the other, it's never going to be enough. They're always going to come back and say, well, China's not cutting their spending. Well, apparently China can get stuff done with 80 billion a year and we can't get anything done with 800 billion a year. So riddle me that, Christopher Ray. Well, again, that's the military. That's not the FBI. Well, again, if you can't spend some of that military spending towards defending us from a cyber attack or defending us from our communication cables being split then what's the point of having military spending at all? And what do we do with that military spending? I don't know if you guys noticed this, but every one of our military men and women that live on bases, they basically live in poverty. They never seem to have enough money to, you know, make ends meet. And then to, to find out that other countries are way ahead of us, do the math, Christopher Ray. that makes no sense. Absolutely makes no sense. 
And don't get me wrong, while I'm moaning and complaining about the spending they do and how they say it's not enough, you know, I still want them to be able to protect us, you know? And then, I don't know if you guys know this, but he said that when it comes to cyber warfare, the Chinese cyber warfare plan outnumber us 50 to 1, even though we spend 10 times more than any other country does on military. That makes, that doesn't math up at all. I myself, God, you can't, it's almost like a book. You're reading the middle of the book. You're trying to predict the end, right? And they're giving us all these multiple choice questions. You know, do you want to see the communications cut by the Russians? Do you want to see energy sectors hit by the Russians? Which, by the way, is another thing that he warned about. And I'm sure you guys have heard about that too, that in some way, shape, or form, they're going to hit either part of the country's utility grid and electric grids, or they're going to hit everything, right? So apparently, some of us are going to wake up in the near future with no utilities, and it's not going to be a one-day fix. It's going to be out for multiple days or perhaps even longer. So that's just kind of disappointing. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts on it. Do you guys feel like we are kind of doomed where something is going to happen? I feel like we're kind of doomed where no matter how much money we spend towards this war or this uh, defense proposal, it just equates to us being milked for more money. Constantly milked for more money. I don't know if you guys heard this, but when I heard this, it just sickened me. With $80 billion, which we've given to these overseas wars here, it seems like every couple of months for the past couple of years, right? You could literally take $80 billion and you could cure homelessness here in the country. Why don't we do that? Why doesn't anyone in Congress and the Senate go to war for that? You know, I am so tired of all of our beautiful cities just corroded by homeless people everywhere. And when I was a young kid, I was told that homeless people were in their space in life because they didn't have an address to to give to employers so that they can get employed. And I always thought that sounded like a really weird excuse, you know. And then when the uh, and then when the uh, pandemic kind of hit over the past couple years, almost every single place you went to was hiring. And meanwhile, there's homeless people just circling the joint. And it's like, why don't any of them get jobs? Oh, yeah, there's no interest there. There's no interest in jobs. Do I care about homeless people? Yeah, believe it or not, I do. I just don't think, um, I just don't think giving, you know, out services that have no effect is effectual anymore. Don't know what the answer is. But when you find out things like you could literally solve homelessness for every human being in the country for 80 billion, and we're okay with sending that money overseas to a never ending war. And basically every time we send money, we send money, a money bag with a hole in the bottom. So it's just constantly needing to be refilled at our expense. Oh, sickening. And here's another thing I wonder. If a company is trying to attack us through a cyber attack, then why aren't we just officially declaring war or why don't we see that as an act of war and just send our best hackers to beat them to the punch? You know, um, we have something set up in the military where we're allowed to do a proactive strike, right? If we feel like someone's attacking us, we're allowed to take that information and go ahead and strike first, right? Does that not happen with cyber warfare? I'm always told how awesome our cyber hackers are, right? But apparently, they've always got their hands tied behind their backs. And we can only act after we've already been attacked ourselves. That's a bunch of boohickey, you know what I mean? Look up that word, boohickey. I don't even know if that's a word. But anyway, that's a bunch of bull, right? God, that's just scary. We are literally just sitting ducks waiting to be attacked we're going to be the only com- uh, we're going to be the only country 
that ever gets its butt kicked by people that spend one-tenth the money. If China and Russia can spend one-tenth of the money and still find a way to get a larger to get a larger Navy fleet, which by the way, that's a little iffy. We always hear that China has this giant Navy fleet and stuff, but they don't have any carriers, which means they've only got like a 600 mile range. So even when we hear these stories, they're iffy. You know, in other words, who cares if your military is a bunch of little destroyer boats? That's nothing. It's the aircraft carriers that matter. But then yet, with a 10 to 1 spending ratio, guys, somehow Russia has hypersonic, you know, hyperspeed missiles or whatever that can go, what, 17,000 miles per hour and it's impossible to defend against them. Somehow spending one-tenth the amount of money we do, they're able to develop that first. Somehow Chinese military, despite spending a fraction of what we do, is able to outnumber us 50 to 1 in cyber warfare. God, get rid of Christopher Ray. Let's get somebody there that's competent. I think they need to get rid of a lot of our government. I feel like our government talk out of both sides of their mouth. You know? Sit there and talk about how awesome we are and at the same time how inept we are. It's like that makes no sense. And I find it just irritating because as you and I are going on our daily walks trying to think about how we can better ourselves, there's this looming threat in the background that we're going to wake up one day and our internet's not going to work. We're going to wake up one day and the utilities are going to be off and not come back on. And, oh, did you stock up water? Did you grab your toilet paper for the year? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I say unbelievable because they keep repeating it. Something bad's going to happen. And then with our government, I don't even know if it's, I don't even know if it's a perpetrator or if it's just ourselves doing it to ourselves, making it look like something it's not. In the past, I would have never doubted us. I didn't believe in all these conspiracies and this, that, and the other, and I still don't want to, you know, but it's hard not to. It's like, we spend so much money. Have you ever seen a map? that'll show all of our military installations and bases across the world. I mean, it is just dotted like crazy. We've got military everywhere. Supposedly we have the best intelligence everywhere. And apparently all that intelligence can do is tell us we're about to get attacked, but we don't know exactly where. And oh yeah, there's nothing we can do about it till after the fact. If a company's getting ready to cripple your people, attack them first, you know? By the way, we actually have the ability to take other countries like Russia and China and actually take them offline. And just between you and I, I really don't think there's any UFOs at all. I actually think it's us. So I have a feeling we have a military that's literally 300 years ahead of the competition. And because of top secret BS, we'll never know about it. Again, just my opinion. I'm sure there's some alien fans out there that actually think the aliens are real. I think every one of those air, uh, every one of those vehicles that we supposedly have hidden in our military garages, I think they all say Boeing and you know <laughs> Boeing and what are the other things that uh, the other companies that we have that are that are actually military companies, right? That's what we do. We have private companies that all they do every day is create weapons of war yet again somehow we're way behind the eight ball with the other countries ugh hey on another note happy wednesday <laughs> we're gonna be dead by friday but hey happy happy wednesday now remember guys today is hump day at work but when you walk every day hump day for us is actually tomorrow so I'm going to say happy hump day today and probably tomorrow. And the truth is, even though I'm recording this today, you might not get it till tomorrow. But we're going to cut through the park today. We always go around it. Let's cut through it. 
Hey, I'm getting a little bit faster at editing. Thank goodness. What always takes four or five hours, I've been able to cut it down a little bit closer to two and a half or three. I uh, definitely enjoy doing it. It's, it's so much fun. If you guys ever get a YouTube channel and you have the ability to do some editing and stuff, try to learn it. Try to do it. It's actually... It's actually kind of fun. You know, a lot of times you make it a four or five hour thing just because you're trying to do something fun with it. And uh, it's really rewarding, guys. Really, really rewarding. And I know a lot of people are contemplating doing a channel and I say go for it. I think you'd really like it. If you like to do crafts or if you like to uh, maybe walk like I do, Grab a video camera. People love that stuff. If you have dogs or puppies or kittens, bust out a camera and show a timeline of their life. And you'll probably get a million subscribers. People love animals more than people, which is kind of a flaw. But Jesse, there's UFOs out there that are going to stop us. We don't know where they're from. They're ours. We have the UFOs. We're many, many decades ahead of our competition. But we, you'll never hear about it. It's top secret. Meanwhile, you have Representative Burchett with his dag nabbit. He just wants to be on the TV all the time. And how much you want to bet in the next five years, every one of them from Elizondo, which already has a book in the works, to Christopher Burchett, the congressman. I believe he's the congressman from Tennessee, but don't quote me on that. He's one of the southern states. That guy is going to end up writing a book and getting paid three million bucks on how he tried to release alien and UFO secrets to the people and he couldn't make it happen. Big con game. You know how you know Christopher Burchett is a joke? <laughs> Every time he goes on camera, he says Dag Nabbit ten times. That's scripted after a while. You know? You're supposed to use those words because you're choosing to use them over a curse word. He's just using them to create a character for himself. And they all are. Notice all those guys on ancient aliens that are swearing up and down that the government has these secrets. They go right back to their ancient aliens gobbledygook. It's goofy. And don't get me wrong, I know we all love ancient aliens, right? But... I loved it in 2005 when it first came out. It's been around forever, and all they do is repeat the same stories in a different way. I'm a huge Alien fan, by the way, in case you're wondering. Love the idea of aliens being out there. But the reality is, if aliens were out there, they would just show themselves to us. They wouldn't care about our military. Would you care about a military if you were 3,000 years ahead of it? Of course not. But they're always by the military, Jesse. Why is that? It's because there are other factions of the military doing war games. That's what it is. Everybody and their brother. When are, when are we going to find out about the aliens? Oh no, they're interdimensional beings. So we have all these people that believe in these interdimensional beings but they don't necessarily believe in a higher power. What's the difference? What's the difference between God and the interdimensional beings? You know, it's all hokey and pokey. I love this talk, by the way. These are my favorite type of movies, you know, where the utilities go out and everybody's miserable. Those are really fun movies. I like scary movies. But I'm starting to think that that's all it is. It's one big threat of a scary movie happening and we'll just throw all the money we can towards it, you know? What's up, my brother? Good morning. Have a good walk. Thank you, too. And then you got to ask yourself, God, Nancy Pelosi is literally old as dirt. Why does she have a thousand dollars worth of ice cream in her freezer? By the way, I don't know if you guys saw the ice cream in my freezer. I could compete with Nancy Pelosi when it comes to ice cream. I have, I have so many ice creams and so many desserts in my house, and it's like a landmine. I have to ignore those desserts constantly, you know? But here's the thing. If I can do it, you can do it. Your husband, 
your wife, your kids. They have Pop-Tarts. They have toaster pastries. They have cinnamon rolls around the house, right? They have cookies and candies. Sometimes you just have to ignore those, you know? And if you have a major, major problem with them where you have to have them out of the house, you know, that's gonna lead to people hiding stuff in their room and in their closets. It's a whole other thing, right? It's gonna lead to eating disorders. I woke up today just energized. I, uh, I'm i almost done with this walk. Guys, you guys gotta get on this half hour walk before work. It's a great way to wake up. If you're thinking about ditching coffee, get out on a walk. It's gonna wake you up naturally. A lot of times people will tell you, well, I need my morning coffee to wake up. Well, why don't you at least check out taking a nice glass of water with you on a walk? And, uh, or bottle water probably would be better. And why don't you see if you can wake up naturally without it? Will it be easy the first handful of days? No, it's never easy breaking a habit. But again, that's where I'm a big fan of Kaizen principles, these little baby steps, you know, three cups of morning Joe. If you can cut it down to two cups, if you can cut it down to one, if you can ditch the sugar out of it, maybe you never have to cut down on it, you know? Caffeine does have some stimulating properties, so maybe if you could drink a cup of coffee without the sugar, maybe it'll help you burn some fat, you know? But either way, despite me telling you about how the world's gonna end for us, I hope you have a beautiful day. We'll talk soon.